In this video, we are going to be building a fully CRUD functional to-do list app to demonstrate how Redis can be used as a primary database. Let's talk about Redis for a quick second. We all know that it used to be an in-memory only database that was used to just cache data from other databases like MongoDB or whatever. However, Redis recently decided to level up and now you can use them as a primary database alongside with it, they released the Redis OM library, which is super convenient. With that said, I just wanna stop for a quick second and thank you for Redis for standing behind this video and sponsoring it, which is good because when you use the link down in the description to sign up, not only you are getting $200 worth of credit on the Redis cloud, but you are entering to win a Tesla. All right, enough talking, let's get into the code. All right, cool. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started by typing in yarn in it and that is going to go ahead and take care of our note package and basically every question that is going to pop at you you can just quickly hit a return because it doesn't really matter default name is perfect and we're pretty much good to go now after that typing in code space period will go ahead and open up vs code for you which i zoomed in real quick for and right after, I'm just gonna go back into our terminal and install every single dependency that we are going to have throughout this application. That is Express, that is Cores, and Redis-OM, which is, by the way, this video is all about. So next up, once those are installed, I'm gonna go into my VS Code, create a new folder, which I'm gonna call Source, or for short, SRC. And uh, inside there, I'm going to go ahead and create my index.js. Uh, going into my package.json, I'm gonna wanna make sure that when I type in yarn start, it my application starts per correctly. So that's why I'm giving this script tag and inside there, I'm gonna give it the starts tag and uh, just target the index file that I'll just created. Now, <clears throat> you can see that I typed node mon instead of node that was uh, originally suggested by Copilot, but that's just an extension that I have. And by the way, you should install it too. It just enables you to run Node apps, Node.js apps real smoothly. And so with that, next up, I'm going to type in type and I'm gonna make sure it is module. And the reason for that is I don't really like using the cons something equals require whatever. Instead, I prefer importing all the packages. So that's why I'm gonna use the module type here. And with that done, I'm gonna go into my index.js and get started working. So first up, I'm gonna go ahead and import express from express, course from cores, and I'm gonna go ahead and create my application instance, which is going to be const uh, app equals express, give it a default port, which is given by the server, or if there is no port given, I'm gonna go with 9,000. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure our, my application is going to be ready to handle JSON and the course is not going to be an issue later on. So first up, just uh, give it a dot route and it's gonna be an async and all that's gonna do is return hello if you call the base URL. And so with that, I'm just gonna go ahead, add the listener and let's test it out if it works. So I'm just gonna type in yarn start and uh, yeah, exactly. My application is console logging. The example app is listening on port 9000, so that's good. And so with that, let's just test it out in uh, Postman, and if it gives back hello, like you can see over there, you are good to move forward. Now next up, we're gonna go ahead and clone the front end entire project I'm giving it to you. Just go ahead, hit the link down below, the GitHub link, download the package, extract it, and then just copy it into the folder where you want to use it later on, and uh, just run a yarn install on it because it has a bunch of different dependencies that you will be needing in order to have the application running so once that is done you can basically look around this is how the application looks like but uh, that's pretty much what we got on the front end going and you can just go ahead and close it we're not really going to mess with that just uh, spin it up with the yarn start and you will see this application going you can go ahead obviously change my name to yours or and same goes for the uh, photo on the top right corner. So uh, with that, you, what you want to do is right now, this to-do application is not functional at all. So introducing Redis. Redis, as I said, usually was used as a in-at-memory cache database, but now we're going to be using it as a primary database. So this is how it's going to look like once you log in with your preferred account. And now is the time to go into billing and payments 
at the credits and uh, use the code clever 200 to get $200 off and with that you can go ahead and get started with a baller subscription and go for like a 500 megabyte one that's my personal recommendation and once you set it up and once you're done with that you're ready to go to set up your database same goes for the database select the module already this json and then just give it whatever name you now this in and out of itself is not going to be uh, sufficient for your application to be able to connect to this database so you will have to go into data access control give it a new role which i just conveniently called admin give access to all the subscription and all the databases give full access to it and then just hit check save role and wait for it to wait for it to process go back to your users give a new create a new user call it admin give it whatever password you want to as long as it is alphanumerical there is a capital letter non-capital numbers and there's a special correct character you should be good to go now once that is done hit check wait for it to finish and we're gonna go back to the database copy the public endpoint link as you can see go back to your application import client and repository from the redis om package go down under where you initiated all the middlewares and then start and then just create a new client using the given function with that you're going to go ahead and open a connection and you're going to have to pass in a link which has the following pattern so you are going to want to type redis colon slash slash username colon password at and the link that you just copied so i'm just going to uh, paste it in here so it's going to be at colon admin one two three four with a dash yeah that's pretty much a perfect password right there and at and i'm just gonna go ahead paste the link that i just copied with that my application technically is connected to redis but it's not not enough yet so we're gonna go ahead create a schema folder in the root folder of the, of the project and just create a to do.schema.js file in there now you're gonna go ahead and import entity and schema on the top from the library and then you're gonna go ahead create a class that we will name to do which will extend entity and uh, we're just gonna pass in the following so you're gonna create a to do uh, a status and then most importantly an ID which will be the entity ID next up you're gonna go ahead and create the actual schema for the class that you just created and the to do will be a string and the status will be a boolean so with all that done, you're gonna go ahead and grab the to-do schema, which you wanna make sure that you export, and then go ahead and import it in from that same file. Now, you're gonna go ahead and use that throughout this application, throughout the rest of this application. So let's go ahead and uh, remove our dummy endpoint and get started with adding a to-do. Let's go ahead and uh, add, some, add some stuff in there. So first off, you're gonna have to create a new repository, which uh, I just conveniently called to-do repo, pass in this schema and the client and then drop the index and then create a new index so that just stops every connection that we had previously going on and creates a new one so technically nothing is going to mess up that's what it that's what it's for so as you can see if you check out the front end there is literally nothing happening there but that's the perfect time to get started and add a new item into our database so we're gonna go ahead and create a new route, which is going to be a post route on the slash add to do slug, which is going to be, which is going to fire off an async function that is going to go ahead, create a new to do item, which will be a new entity inside of our to do repository. Now we're gonna give it a couple of traits. This is going to be the to do and obviously the status that we we're normally giving with it a to-do list app or a to-do item or whatever and then uh, don't forget the id which will uh, be created once you save once you save the item into the repository once that's done you're just going to go ahead and respond back okay and uh, you should technically be good to go so as you can see i just go i went ahead and tested it out technically that item should be already in in my database however you cannot see anything showing up and that's because we're not fetching anything so Let's go ahead and fix that. Now, next up, I'm gonna go ahead and create a get uh, method endpoint, which once again is going to be an async function. And uh, with that, I'm just going to wait for the repo to search and return every single item that I have in there. Technically, my, I want my to-do list to show me every single item that I have in there. So that's pretty, pretty logical, right? 
So uh, as you can see, I tested it out and it worked. Both of my items that I uh, throw in there is showing up perfectly. And so time to get rid of some of those. We're gonna go ahead and create a delete route on the slash delete to do slash colon ID. That means that in the URL parameter, I'm going to be passing in the actual ID that I want to delete. And that's what actually I'm going to be using to remove the specific item from my repository. And uh, once it's done, I'm just gonna go ahead and respond back okay. And so that's why, that's how my front end will know that it's time to refetch my to-do list. Now, let's say you want to check, check off one of your to-dos or you made a typo or whatever, and uh, you cannot fix it. Now, that's not really good. So let's go ahead and uh, fix that. And so what we're gonna do is create a put route on the update to do slash ID, ID route. And once again, fire off an async function. And it's going to be really close to what we had when we added a new item. The only difference is, is in this case, we are not creating a new entity. We are just going to fetch our existing entities and see if we find one. If, by the way, if your database doesn't find a matching item, it's not going to really think a lot about it. It's just gonna go ahead and create a new one. So you could technically use this function to create the item and to update it as well, but you don't wanna do that, obviously. So we're just gonna pass in whatever items just changed and then save the save the to-do and then just go ahead, hit okay, send okay back. And that way our front end is going to know that something has changed, time to refetch our to-do list. So with that said, we actually made it uh, completely functional. There you go, there you have it. This is a fully CRUD functional to-do list app using Redis as its primary database. As you can see, I'm typing a couple of examples to just show off the functionality of the application. Once again, thank you so much Redis for sponsoring this video. With that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button and the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.